Today's video shot from beautiful Sicily in Italy is the third in the series on how we can adjust corporate presentations for improved readability. Today in particular, we're going to take a look at presenting data in tables large and small. This is a sample table from the 2015 annual report of BMW. Now, when do we use tables? We use tables when we want to bring attention to the actual numbers, right? We don't always have to use charts to visualize the data. Tables are a perfect form of presenting the data. It's just that we have to make sure that we organize the table in a way that is easy for the reader to read. Sounds simple, right? But it's not always easy to achieve. So let's take a look at this example. In this case, my attention goes to the lines more than the text. I personally find this better to read if we highlight the sections with a very light background color, increase the font size, and get rid of these connecting lines. I'd also switch the totals around and put them on top together with the section head. So when I take a look at the section, I immediately see the total. Makes it so much easier to read, right? Now, here's an example of a larger table. Generally, large tables are quite difficult to read. Now, from the organizational perspective, I find this to be well organized, except I find these lines to be a bit distracting. They actually attract my attention first before the text here. I would personally bring more attention to the sections and to the labels and organize this a bit differently. Instead of using these lines to connect the categories to the values, I'll use white space and add lines or a light shaded background to the totals of each section. I also think that adding some color to this table can bring it to life. So I'll either go with some form of conditional formatting, such as using data bars or even custom formatting, using some color in custom formatting and maybe symbols here. So if you're interested to find out how, keep watching. I'm going to start off first with data bars. I'm going to use conditional formatting to achieve that look. As a second step, I'm going to use custom formatting and symbols to get a slightly different look. Let's start with the data bars first. To get data bars in here, it's easiest to already have values in the cells. And these values are going to be this. Okay, so I'm going to make a direct cell reference. Let's pull this down and see what we get. So right here where we have no numbers, we're getting zeros in here. What I'm going to do is just add an if before this and say if this value equals nothing, then nothing. Otherwise, give us back that same value. And let's copy this down. Now with this highlighted, I'm going to go to conditional formatting. So that's directly in the home tab, conditional formatting. And we can see data bars already in here. We have some predefined versions that we can use, or we can go to more rules. Data bars are super simple to use in Excel. All we have to decide on is the color that we want for positive values. So that's this one. In this case, I'm gonna go with a lighter green. Then if I go to negative value and axis, I can decide on the fill color for the negative bars. So I'm going to go with something lighter. Let's take this light orange. I can also decide on some axis settings, such as the axis color. Now, I don't want to see the axis, so I'm going to go with white in this case. Now, to hide the values in the cells and only show the bar, we need to tick mark show bar only. Okay, and that's it. That's super simple to get data bars in here. It gives a report some color and it brings attention to the bigger positive and bigger negative differences. Now, an alternative to this is to use symbols to highlight the positive and negative deviations. And we can do that directly with custom formatting. And by custom formatting, I mean when you right mouse click and you go to format cells. So we don't necessarily need to use conditional formatting for that. So let me just hide this out of view. And let me show you how you can use symbols here instead of data bars. 
First off, let's decide on the symbols that we want to use. I'm going to go to Insert, Symbols. You can pick some symbols that you like. I use very often aerials, geometric shapes, and you can see I have these two in here. So I'm just going to click on this symbol and press Insert, just so I have it somewhere on my spreadsheet. This one as well and press Insert. And then maybe I will use this one. So I'll just click on it and press Insert. Just get them on the spreadsheet so I can easily copy and paste and see which one I want to go with. Okay, so we can close this. Now, just like before, I am first going to put values in here and then I'm going to format the cells. So now I'm going to go with equals this and I'm not going to add an if in this case so that if this is nothing, then nothing, otherwise give me the value. I'm going to leave that out because in custom formatting, I can actually define how I want Excel to show the zeros. There is a special rule in custom formatting and I cover this in more detail in other videos and I'll make sure to put a link to those in this video. But briefly, I'll explain this to you. If I right mouse click and go to format cells or you press control one as the shortcut and we go to custom formatting here, the rule behind this is in the first place is how you want positive numbers to be formatted. This is followed by an Excel separator, and then you define how you want negative numbers to be formatted. And then after that, there comes again the separator, and you define how you want zero values to be formatted, and then how you want text to be formatted. Okay, so you have the option to fully decide on the formatting of positive, negative, zero, and text. The first argument is positive numbers. Right? So if I just take everything away and I just put the Excel separator here and I say, okay, I've just hidden everything. I have numbers in there, but I'm not seeing any numbers. And this is exactly how I can hide the zeros, but I don't want to hide the positive and negative values. Instead, I want to show symbols for them. So I'm going to copy these two first. Let's see how it looks with these symbols. I'm going to highlight the same area, press Ctrl-1 to go back to custom formatting. Right here, first spot is how positive numbers should be formatted. And for positive numbers, I want the up arrow. For negative numbers, that comes in second, I want the down arrow. And what do I do for zero? I just leave it empty, just like I had it before. Now I see an up arrow for positive values and a down arrow for negative values. I also can control the color of how positive and negative values are seen here. So if I go back to custom formatting, now the colors come in square brackets, so I can put in green. These are the standard colors, but they are dependent on the language that you're using in Excel. So if you have a German Excel version, you have to put in the equivalent of green in German and the equivalent of red in German or whatever language you have. You just have to find the equivalent translation of green and red for these. And don't forget that these have to be in square brackets. And when I say OK, I get these colors. Now, generally, I'm not a big fan of the default green here. The red is okay sometimes, although sometimes I might want it a bit darker or a bit lighter. So there is a link that I've added to this workbook that takes you to the Microsoft page, which shows you all the colors that are available and the index values for those colors. Let's say for green, we want to use this one, that's 43. And for red, we can use a darker one, 53. Okay, so 43, 53, let's go back to Excel. Now I'm gonna highlight this, Control one to go back to custom formatting. And instead of green, I'm gonna put color 43. And for red, it's color 53. This color part that I typed in is also language dependent. So translate color to the language of your Excel and put that text in. Now I'm just going to change the alignment of this 
to be to the left, so closer to our numbers, and that's how we can get up and down arrows in here. As an alternative, you can use the square symbol here. So sometimes I prefer to use the square symbol instead of the arrows. And if I go back to custom formatting, it's basically the same thing, except that you just have to replace that up and down arrows with the same square symbol, which you can see I've done here. So I'm just gonna click on this, go with okay, and that's the look that we get. So this brings us some color to the report. It makes the report easier to read. It directs our attention to the negative and to the positive changes. Let's put these reports side by side. Which one is easier to read? If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And for more of these videos, why not subscribe to this channel so that you get updates when new videos come out.